We are out here at Route 66 State Park. There you go, and let me help you out here. Let's give Blue a tow. Ready, and go. There you go. And you're on your way, aren't you? Good job. And we're stuck again. Hello, we are Katie and Scott. Our goal is to make it to full-time RV. But in the meantime, we'll have to continue building our life, this time older and wiser. Hello and welcome back to another edition of Older and Wiser's State Park series. I'm Scott. I'm Katie. And today we're going to take a look at one of our favorite parks. It's Route 66 State Park. And it's a favorite for us because of all the hiking trails and the real flat terrain. And because it's close by. Yes. And there's a lot of pretty areas out there and a lot of diverse areas. Katie likes to take um, clients out there for photography. Yes. We like to take Malcolm out there to walk the trails or ride on his, um, his power wheels, his little Raptor Blue. So uh, this has been a park that, that's kind of our go-to park. Yeah, we've been there frequently. <laughs> yes, we certainly have. Route 66 State Park is a 419 acre park. It's located off of Interstate 44, just a mile east of Eureka, Missouri, which is about 30 minutes from downtown St. Louis. Eureka is a great little town. It's got plenty of shopping and dining, especially in the small town Main Street area that it has. It's quite historic. Um, at the other end of Eureka, you've got Six Flags St. Louis, which is a large theme park. It's got many rides and attractions. There isn't any camping at Route 66 State Park, but there is a KOA and a Jellystone Park close by. There are also plenty of hotels in Eureka and the surrounding area. The park amenities include 8.2 miles of hiking, bicycle and equine trails, access to the Merrimack River for fishing, a boat ramp, large picnic areas with a playground, two large reservable shelters, and a great visitor center that houses a small Route 66 historic archive and a gift shop. The Visitor Center, located in the old Bridgehead Inn on the east side of the Merrimack River, was joined to the park on the west side by the old Route 66 bridge, which has been closed due to safety concerns. The park itself is accessible only from the eastbound Interstate 44 at exit 265. The Visitor Center is accessed from either direction at exit 266 and is cut off from the park it serves. The Visitor Center used to be a roadhouse along Route 66, I believe it was actually four different restaurants over the years. Right. And in the visitor center, they've got a lot of memorabilia from Route 66 and the businesses um, that used to live there. There's a small museum and a gift shop as well. Mm -hmm. Located near the entrance of the park is the equestrian area. It's pretty cool because it's got a turnaround perfect for horse trailers. It also has a mounting block and there's a trailhead over there so you can just unload your horses and go. The park has a large picnic area with several tables and standalone grills. There are also two large reservable shelters. They can hold up to 100 people each. They have electricity and water and restrooms are nearby. They are accessible to people with disabilities and can be reserved for $60 per day. The restrooms and water are available seasonally though, April 1st through October 31st only. Located near the picnic area is a small playground. It's got two swings and a, some playground equipment with two slides. It's not very big, so I think it's pretty good for younger children. One of the park's main features are its level walking, bicycling, and equestrian trails. They're perfect for beginner riders and health conscious visitors. There are several trails throughout the park with trailheads located at various points, and usually there's parking nearby. There's also a very long paved loop. It's a great place for kids to learn to ride their bikes or for experienced bicyclists to have a I think it's about a three mile loop that you can do. There's also hiking through the woods, um, but the trails are level, they're gravel, and they're wide enough for several 
hikers to be on at the same time passing back and forth in fact we've taken malcolm out there specifically so he can ride his power wheels um through some of those hiking trails it's been a, a good time also um it's good to note that the trails link to a new trail system in Eureka that's going to eventually link up with other portions of Castlewood State Park in Baldwin. At the park, you can enjoy fishing on the Merrimack River from sunrise to sunset. The Merrimack River is one of the most diversified rivers in North America, and more than half of the fish species in Missouri are found in this river. All three of the black bass can be fished, along with catfish, panfish, and trout. If you do plan to fish, please bring a boat. Uh, there is a boat ramp there where you can get to easily. There are no fees for the use of the boat ramp, um, but the ramp users must exit the park before the gate closure time. There are no automatic gates to exit after a park closure. Now, there are a few ponds on the park grounds, but they are not allowed for fishing. So uh, if you are wanting to go fishing, you're going to want to bring a boat or some way to access the river. One of the interesting things about this park is that it used to be a former town called Times Beach, Missouri. Um, there are exhibits in the Visitor Center that highlight the history of Times Beach, both as a summer resort area on the Merrimack um, and as one of the nation's environmental success stories. Uh, in 1926, land lots in the resort area of Times Beach were offered to the public with a six-month subscription to the St. Louis Times newspaper for an additional $67.50. What a steal. I know. Um, the area eventually developed into a small town, but in the early 80s, it was discovered that, a, that waste oil had been sprayed in the streets of Times Beach to reduce dust, and it was contaminated with high levels of dioxin. The homes were purchased and a massive cleanup followed. Once the cleanup was complete, the land was turned over to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources Division of State Parks. And now it is Route 66 State Park. It's pretty awesome. From disaster back to the environment. The original roadhouse that the Visitor Center is located was built in 1935 and has actually been four different... Um, buildings. First it was the Bridgehead Inn in okay. 1935, Steinley's Inn in 1946, the Bridgehead Inn again in 1972, and then the Galley West in 1980 before it was closed. The Route 66 bridge that connects the visitor center to the park um, is the original bridge for, for Route 66. Okay. Um, so even though they have deemed it unsafe, and dismantled it partially uh, it, yes it's not in use um the the top surface is dismantled there is a, an effort going on right now to save the bridge restore it and turn it into a, a walking path or something like that but reconnect the visitor center to the to the park area that would be super nice yeah so we'll uh we'll put a link to that website below if you want to read a little bit more about that effort and possibly chip in so that wraps up this edition of our state park series. We hope that you found the video to be informative and that maybe you'll go check out Route 66 State Park. And if you did like the video, please give us a thumbs up below and even consider subscribing to our channel. We've got lots of content coming out. Um, camping season is coming up, so that'll be exciting. You can follow along as we try to figure out uh, our way out of newbie status <laughs> in the whole RVing world. <laughs> We'll get there. Right. Yes, yeah, so there'll, there'll definitely be some fails along the way, but successes as well and lessons learned that we can pass along. So anyway, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.